vault. Let's get into it. Hello, uh, Mike Pelletier. Uh, I'm on the the Postgres team at Superbase, um, and you know we we sort of work on the the database itself, the 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 sort of core product that we ship to customers. Hey everyone. So my name is Josh, and I am a front end developer at Superbase, uh, but I actually mainly focus on uh, building out the dashboard. So where the dashboard comes in is basically it's not just trying to throw in magic behind Postgres, but it's just trying to make something as big as Postgres easy for everyone to use. You don't have to be like a full-on backend developer to know how to use Superbase. You can be as fresh of a front-end developer as myself to, to use Superbase itself. Awesome. Very exciting. And if you don't know me, my name is John Myers. I'm a developer advocate at Superbase. And so I get to talk to all of the very smart people about all of the very cool things that they're building uh, and hopefully help people in the community understand all of the cool things that they can do with Superbase. Um, so today we're talking all about Vault and encryption. Um, so Mike, can you tell me what does uh, what problem does this solve? Why are we building this? Um, well, customers almost always have sensitive data. Uh, it, that can be anything from uh, personally identifying information, and there's typically rules and regulations in the industry or in their respective industries around the protection of that data. Often that's some legal regulation that they have to comply with. But then there's also sort of more mundane stuff like API keys, um, URLs to internal hosts or, or other system information uh, that you want to store with a little more um, security than, than just in, in, in bare text. You mean we're not meant to commit these values to source control so it's convenient for our application? Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, do not commit your your API keys to GitHub. Um, and, uh, you know, that's the sort of the classic mistake. Uh, so the approach that, you know, typically one would take is you you would you would fetch the this secret from some part of your your system. Um, so so currently we have a secret storage system, um, but it's external to the customer's database. And so we wanted to bring secrets into you know, the customer secrets into the customer's database, but it still needs to be stored encrypted. So one common approach is is well is to do what's called full disk encryption. That's where the entire database is encrypted on disk. A problem with that is that let's say you PG dump, you you dump or take a backup of your database, it comes off the disk unencrypted. It comes it comes in plain text. So it's really only encrypted on that one disk. Um, there's there's not a way for you to to get the encrypt. You, know, you could I guess you could take an encrypted image of that disk, but then you're having sort of some other uh, issues that you're dealing with. The other problem with that is that it literally encrypts everything, including stuff that's not sensitive. Um, so you can't really do a dump uh, be because you can only sort of capture the full encrypted image. Um, so, th so there's some weaknesses with full disk encryption. Um, the 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 upside of full disk encryption is that it's pretty fast. I mean, and generally you're writing data at, at basically the the disk speed um, because a lot of full disk encryption features are accelerated in, in, for that case. Um, so we we wanted something that was sort of in the middle. Um, and uh, so um, the way it works is you there's a new table um, in Superbase called vault.secrets. Vault is the schema, also the name of the extension. And secrets is, is the table. And there's a column in that table called secret. And data that you insert into that table is encrypted when it gets stored. Uh, there's a trigger that fires, and the, and the trigger encrypts the data, and that data goes into the table. So when you dump your database, the the column comes out encrypted. You 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 don't see the secret even in backups or in wall files for replication purposes. Um, so it's 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 more secure than full disk encryption in 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 that regard. Um, but uh, secrets are only useful when you can use them when they're decrypted. So the other part, there's the trigger that encrypts data going in. The other part is there's a, a view that decrypts the data coming out. So you put data in the table to encrypt it, and you select data out of the view to see it in, in decrypted form. And this is basically transparent to the user. You don't have to deal with um, uh, handling keys, because that's really the, the weakness with, with 
database encryption with, say, PG Crypto, which is a, a stock encryption library that comes with Postgres. PG Crypto has encryption and decryption functions, but you have to pass the key, the raw 32 byte key. And that's really a problem, right? Because then your key is also in the database, is in SQL, which means it can it can leak through, you know, it can leak in the PG dump. It could leak in a log. You could send it in a well stream. And 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 you're basically handling this raw key, and that's that's a weakness in the system. If you have to have the key in hand to use the secret, then it's, it's sort of what's the point, right? Uh, um, so the way the vault works is that you don't have the, the raw key in hand. What you have is just a reference to a key that is stored external to the database. Uh, Superbase, we manage the keys for you outside of Postgres. So you say key one, key two, they're actually UUIDs, so they're a little more complicated than that. So you know this secret is encrypted with key one, and that secret is encrypted with key two. And you can store one and two, the, the IDs, in your database. But they're not helpful. If an attacker gets your dump, they see the secret, they see the key ID, but without that externally managed key, they can't decrypt the data because all they have is the, the ID, the reference to the key. And that's really the, the sort of main difference between um, the vault and its column encryption approach and using, say, PG Crypto. Because with PG Crypto, there is no externally managed key. There is no way to reference a key. Um, you could have a side table with a key ID in it and the raw key. But again, the raw key is just stored in that table. So the really important part of the security is that these keys are outside of SQL. They're inaccessible to SQL. Even if someone logs into your database, they can't get the raw, the, the, the actual raw key. Well, I would love to see how this works. So should we okay. do a little demo of the code side of things? Yeah, let me fire up the screen share. So. Um, there's uh there's a schema called vault. So in the vault there's a uh, secrets table, um, and uh, we'll um, give a little more detail here. Uh, it's a it's a pretty uh, narrow table. It doesn't have very many columns. Um, there's an ID that's a UUID. Uh, there's a name that has to be unique and it's optional. So your secrets don't have to have names, but it's usually good to give them a name. Like you might name your secret Stripe API key. And then you might name another secret Stripe test API key. And you know, that kind of tells you which, you know, at, when you're in code, you're saying select where test key, and you use that for your test system, or you do select where name equals API key, and then that's what you would use in production. So they, ca they can have optional unique names. Um, and then there's this description, which just lets you elaborate on, you know, put in a little blurb or, or, or an explainer. Um, then there's the actual secret itself. Uh, then there's the key ID. And I mentioned earlier about how it's, it's a reference. You can see here, there's a default key ID. Everyone gets a, a different default key ID. It's randomly generated when, when your system is created. Um, then there's this thing called a nonce. Not really important what it is, but it's, it's like you said, salting earlier is that it deduplicates duplicate secrets. Um, so it's just a little bit of random goodness that gets mixed in every single time. Um, this nonce gen function is the default. So you, you, basically, you don't have to worry about it. It'll generate a unique nonce for you every time you create a secret. Um, and so you don't have to worry about it. But if you are sort of one of those crypto heads that want to do it your own way, you're, you're free to do so. And then just some metadata when it was created and when the, the secret was updated. Um, so there's there's a couple ways you can create a secret. Like We can just insert straight into um, uh, Alt.secrets, little box here. Uh, so we're going to add a new secret. Um, well, I can't spell today. I'll use, uh, we'll just say foo. You know, obviously, this would be something a little more interesting than foo. Uh, but we're going to insert that. So when we, when we look at the table now, uh, let me change the formatting here a little bit. Um, you can see that the secret isn't foo anymore. It's this string of line noise. Uh, that's and it's also not three characters. It's it's quite a bit more characters. That's because that signature I was talking about, that authentication, that gets appended on the end. So it ends up being a little bit bigger than your secret by I think 64 bytes or 32 bytes or something. Like that. 
Um, you can see there's a, a key ID. Uh, there's this nonce thing. Again, don't have to worry about it. Name and description are null. And then this is the ID for the secret. Um, so when you want to uh, get the secret back out, you, you know, you, you usually like you could refer to it by ID. This is the primary key. So if you had like a another table that you wanted to reference your secrets from, you would make a foreign key relationship to this ID column and you would store that ID in the other table. So it's all standard SQL stuff. Um, but you might be thinking like, well, then how do I use the secret if it's, if it's encrypted like this? There's a view called vault.decryptedSecrets. Um, and it looks very similar, except that it has this extra column called decrypted secrets. So if we select from vault.decryptedSecrets, um, you can see there it is. Now, this is a view. This decryption happens um, on the fly. When I ran this query, it went and looked in the table, found the external key, put them together, decrypted the secret column, and produced this decrypted secret column. And, and that's really the, the, the very basic mechanism. You insert, you select. Um, but when I PG dump this database, the view doesn't get dumped. Like the view doesn't run when you do a dump. Only the table gets dumped. So all that will end up in the database backup is the encrypted value, never the decrypted value. And that's kind of the basic, the basic mechanism. Now there's another way, there's a, for, for the convenience of, of, um, of using the vault, you can also, um, there's a create secret function. And, you know, we can say bar this time. Um, and we can give it a name. We can just like, let's say stripe key. That's the optional second argument. And then, uh, you know, this is the description. That's, uh, you know, a third, a third argument there. All right. And it, you can see it created a secret. It returned the ID. Uh, if we select star from vault dot decrypted where ID equals uh, this UID. Oh, there's our secret. Uh, de decrypted is bar. You can see there's the description and there's the name. So we could have said, we could have also said where um, name equals stripe key. Right, same thing. Uh, both the ID has to be unique and the name has to be unique. The name is optional. Uh, and then there's one final sort of uh, um, thing I wanted to mention about how uh, this authenticated encryption works. Um, I said, remember earlier I said AEAD, authenticated encryption with associated data. The associated data is important. Um, but so to show you what, how that happens, there's a standard um, table in uh, Postgres called um, EGSEC label. Uh, we won't get, I won't get into how security labels work because that's another 30 minutes of discussion. Uh, but you can see here that there is a um, security label for that uh, secrets table I was showing you. And this is how you tell PG Sodium how to encrypt the vault table and really any table. Uh, you can apply this transparent column encryption that PG Sodium provides can be used on any, on any column, on more than one column in the same table. So it's a generic mechanism that that savvy SQL users can use all throughout their system. This, the vault table is sort of a pre-created encrypted table for people who just want to manage simple secrets. But you can go way beyond that with PG Sodium and there's documentation, we're gonna have a blog post. Um, so, so, but what, the thing I wanted to point out is this associated clause here. It says associated ID description created at updated at. So what associated does is those other columns, the ID, the description, the created at, and the updated at, they get combined with the secret when the signature is created. So when the secret is signed, these other columns are signed with it. In a sense, it's, it's what is often referred to as row signing. So what happens is you dump the data, you get this row, but, but what if somebody went in and forged the description or forged the name. And instead of saying uh, John's credit card as the name, it put uh, Joshin's credit card as the name, right? They could forge that other data. And if it weren't associated with the secret, then that would be a way to sort of fool you. But by using the associated data, the AD and AEAD, those columns get mixed in to the signature and you can't forge them. If you try and forge them, the secret decryption fails. And so that's an important way of sort of locking down some of the other columns in your table without having to encrypt them. 
you can still authenticate them. You can still know that they're not forged, but they don't have to be encrypted. They can just be, you know, plain text. Awesome. Well, yeah, all of this SQL stuff is is kind of stretching my uh, my abilities with SQL. Um, so uh, what would this look like if you uh, weren't um, super familiar with SQL and you wanted to do this through um, the dashboard, the Superbase dashboard, and use the UI for it? You can find the vault settings within your project settings uh, at the bottom right here. So as Mike mentioned, uh, you get secrets management and your encryption keys here. Uh, if we were look at keys first, so with when you've got vault enabled for your project, each project comes with a default vault key. Typically, you just need one default vault key. Uh, that should be more than enough. But if you would like to create a new key, you can also do it here. So let's say if I were to name my key as a this key, and I add a key. It just be added to the UI. Uh, likewise, you can also delete the key. Uh, so this is just a whole UI to manage your, your keys in general. And now for the fun part, which is uh, secrets management, as what Mike covered before. Uh, let's say if you want to add a new secret. Uh, essentially, previously when we might cover the vault.create secret uh, SQL function, this is basically just a UI behind it. So if you were to give a secret name, a very secret key, and a very secret description, and my secret value would be super secret, and it's just food for now. Uh, yeah, and then I can also select the key which I want to encrypt my secret with. For now, I'll just use the default key, but actually you can also just create a new key right here. Uh, but just to keep things simple, I'll use the default vault key, add secret, and voila, there you go. You got a key, you got a secret created in your vault management. And if you would like to see your vault secret, you can just actually just click on this and you show the, the secret value. Uh, likewise, once you've got a secret created, yeah, you can just edit it however you want. Secret key, for example. Big secret, and there we go. You all show up just, and this is just honestly just a UI behind uh, all the, uh, the the vault schema actually. So in fact, if I were to jump to the table editor and open up the vault schema, you'll notice that um, within the secrets table is exactly what we just stored. So the name here is secret key new. The secret has the encrypted value here, and then if we were to take a look at the decrypted secrets view, there we go. Your decrypted secret value is just right here. That is very cool. So presumably this would like flow through the rest of the like super base environment, right? So if you if you needed if you wanted to use one of these encrypted keys in a Postgres function or like in an RLS policy or something like that, is that possible? Exactly. I think that that's the whole beauty of, of this. Everything is just baked into Postgres. So your keys here, secrets here can just be used anywhere. That is awesome. Very, very cool. All right. Well I am very excited to go and build the next WhatsApp and make a super encrypt in super encrypted uh, application that isn't hosted by Meta or Facebook. So thank you so much for uh, for taking us through this. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Joshin. Uh, I'm very thank excited you. to to have a little bit more of a play with this and dig in further. And if you want to uh, to explore a little further yourself, make sure you check out the blog post. There will be a link in the description to this video. But yeah, once again, thank you so much, Mike and Joshin. Hope you enjoy the rest of launch week. Thanks, John. Wow, that makes some pretty complex stuff very simple. Now, a simple way that you can make sure that you don't miss out on any of the announcements of future launch weeks is to subscribe to our YouTube channel over at youtube.com slash superbase and hit that little notification bell. You can follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash superbase. This is where we'll be posting more info about each of these launches, as well as everything else we do and all of our top tier memes. And join our community Discord over at discord.superbase.com to chat with nearly 11,000 folks who are also building cool stuff with Superbase. Now we'll be kicking off a Twitter space shortly to answer all the questions you might have around Vault and encryption, so come and hang out with the team one last time. Otherwise, thank you so much for joining us for another launch week, and we'll see you real soon for the next one.